hello uh, so welcome to this uh, particular lesson in chemistry so uh, now that we've looked at what matter is we now go into kinetic theory of matter so the term kinetic okay it's very important for us to know that this term kinetic it has some meaning okay it has some meaning that is important so kinetic uh, simply means uh, motion eh? okay simply means motion <clears throat> so kinetic simply means motion so kinetic theory of matter so under matter we said that matter there are three states of matter okay and we said the three states of matter were what solid okay Uh, gas and also liquid so that's what we know about matter so if we were to link this term kinetic theory the theory of motion of what matter so what we are simply saying here is this <clears throat> We are saying that matter, when we talk about matter, what you should think is what solid, liquid, and what gas. Okay. So we are saying that the theory says that matter is made up of tiny particles. Okay. And these particles are in continuous random motion. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a solid. You remember solids, the particles are very, very closely packed. Okay. And then in a liquid, you find that you could have particles like this. They are close together, but at least there is space. And in a gas, you find that this is where the particles move freely because of the spaces in between. So we know that matter is made up of tiny particles. Right? So these are the particles in solid particles. So this is but this is a solid, this is a liquid, and this is a gas. These these particles then continuous random motion. Motion simply means they move. Okay, they move. But in a solid, how do they move? Okay, the movement here is all due to the vibration okay the vibration but here they can move over short distances here they are free to move randomly everywhere so now this kinetic theory of matter was conducted as an experiment and it is what we fam it is famously known as the brownian motion it's the evidence of kinetic theory of what matter now let's look at what is this <coughs> a brownian motion okay so now the Brownian motion we're saying is a term that is used to refer to what the continuous random movement of particles. Particularly the Brownian motion talks about gases, eh? okay, and liquids, okay, because in solids the that you can't observe that vibration, eh? but the other experiments have been conducted to see how the particles are vibrating in a solid, okay. So this phenomenon called the Brown and motion, this man that discovered it was called Robert Brown. And this was in 1827, a very long time ago. And what he studied were pollen grains, okay? <clears throat> he studied the pollen grains underwater. He observed the pollen grains were moving about. So now, then he later now conducted this experiment using what? Smoke smoke particles in air and this was the experiment that he carried out so what he needed the apparatus was a glass cell he needed a source of light so a source of light to enable him to see a microscope also to enable him to see a converging lens also to focus the light and the source of smoke so this is what he did so a small glass cell in which smoke was being trapped so this is this glass cell and then the smoke inside okay and then he was looking using the microscope like this. And this is where he placed the lens and the source 
of light okay so now a microscope is used because the smoke particles are too tiny to be seen eh? a microscope is something that will always do what magnify things microscopes they magnify things okay so the microscope was to magnify the things because the particles are too tiny you can't see them with your naked eye eh? the converging lens was just to focus light so that light can go in one direction okay into the smoke cell so this is what robert brown was observing so after he observed this now his observation was when the light strikes the smooth particles they appear as bright points of light under the microscope moving randomly in a zigzag so i find that these particles they move in a zigzag okay in a zigzag so that's what uh, robert brown saw under the brownian motion so these are the particles so the smoke particles were moving in all direction like that okay so now his explanation was the zigzag movement is due to collision what is collision it means if you have got one smoke particle here one smoke particle here one smoke particle here one smoke particle here when this one is moving it can bump into this particle and once it bumps into this particle it can be deflected this other direction so because of these we call them collisions they are colliding eh? the english term is colliding okay so they were it's because they collide as they are moving eh? that's why the, the movement is zigzag they were colliding and these questions will come collision of particles with invisible air molecules okay that move about randomly in the smoke cell this is called the brownian motion so the conclusion was the air molecules are also in continuous random motion also the particles are also in continuous random motion and these two once they collide they were uh, pressing against the walls of the smoke cell right? okay so that is what it is so you can see questions will come under the brownian motion for example a question will come like this what are the bright specks uh, seen okay so the bright specks seen those are smoke particles okay smoke particles this is the answer for this one okay they are smoke particles okay smoke particles why are they why are the specks dancing about dancing about meaning zigzag movement okay why we've said because of what collision with air molecules okay collision meaning colliding collision with with air molecules still the conclusion that can be drawn from the Brownian motion and the conclusion is this one which is here the air molecules are in continuous random motion colliding with the smoke particles and the walls of the smoke cell okay that is the conclusion that is needed here so this is what we call Brownian motion so it's understood now let's go on to diffusion so the word diffusion here the definition is that it is the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to the region of lower concentration okay so because of this we say diffusion moves down the concentration gradient time so you can see the particles here are high in concentration they tend to move to places of lower concentration okay now this diffusion here it is a very um, common thing that you observe in our everyday life right? for example if someone is maybe cooking uh, a delicious meal in the kitchen you find that even when you are seated in the living room you can uh, actually smell okay the aroma coming from the kitchen because the particles are moving from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration let's give an example let's say this is a man and this man maybe is using a spray uh, called axe okay so once he sprays himself with axe so the particles of axe here are high in concentration on the man 
and because they are high in concentration they'll escape so find that someone maybe another person who has not sprayed anything these particles of axe this is a spray we use a deodorant so those particles of axe which has been sprayed on the body of this man they will be moving and this person where they are in low concentration this person will, will detect the smell and then this is how you get compliments like oh you are smelling nice okay what is happening there it is diffusion okay it is diffusion the same thing will take place for a man who has hasn't taken a bath in three days he is going to have a bad smell okay now that bad smell those are also at particles and those particles are high in concentration because he hasn't been bathing and they can also reach this person and then he's going to say mm, you are smelling bad okay all this is because of diffusion so diffusion it can either embarrass you or it can give you a compliment if you take a bath you put a nice perfume diffusion will give you a compliment if you are not bathing diffusion will definitely embarrass you okay diffusion will happen whether you like it or not okay even when someone has released a bad gas okay what we call a fat eh? okay we call these fats when someone releases a bad gas you would definitely be embarrassed because no matter how much you try to contain that the particles of the bad gas here are high in concentration and they will move to the surrounding areas and there you are causing what air pollution okay air pollution so air pollution is what facilitated by diffusion okay so this is because these particles are able to move we are from looking at the kinetic theory of matter so these particles will always move okay they always move from high concentration to low concentration okay i know these examples are quite funny but they are good because you understand them so let's look at now this diffusion sometimes you can speed it up or lower it down and let's see what happens so the rate of diffusion the rate of diffusion is the amount of gas or liquid that diffuses in a unit of time and there are factors that affect the rate of diffusion okay let's look at these factors so number one the temperature so when there is a high temperature when the temperature is high also diffusion will be high that's why you find that when it's hot like this in october people are uh, they need to bath okay you need to make sure you're smelling nice because that bad smell will diffuse faster and you find that eh, polluting the surrounding environment always remember this when it's hot you haven't taken a bath or you've taken a bath so whether you're smelling nice or smelling good that smell in tertiary form it would diffuse faster so the rate of diffusion is faster if the temperature is high and when it's cold it is slower okay during the cold season it is very slow and also the concentration the concentration just talks about the amount there are those people who spray uh, raw on or perfume they spray almost finishing the whole bottle meaning they've increased the amount so meaning the concentration is high so there the concentration also the faster the rate of diffusion okay the larger the difference okay in concentration of particles between two points also the size of particles it was discovered that smaller particles are able to diffuse faster and then bigger particles diffuse slower okay so these are the three important factors that affect these questions come away eh? factors that affect the rate of diffusion number one temperature concentration size of particles so the states of matter in which diffusion takes place it's liquids and gases this is very important so diffusion also occurs in what in liquids okay i'll give you an example let's say you you, you want to take a juice okay let's say this is uh, just juice you add only a few to just juice but you find that you can add in plenty of water up to this level and everything will taste, will taste sweet eh? though this is called dilution 
but dilution is an example of word diffusion right eh? so meaning here the drink here the juice it's high in concentration it's high in concentration so it will diffuse to where it is lower in concentration okay in the water because you've added water okay so you can also go through this example try to see if you can understand it eh? okay so diffusion occurs in so diffusion is faster in gases than it can take place in what in liquids okay that is about uh, so examples of diffusion now so diffusion takes place since let's take examples of diffusion when a stopper is taken out of perfume bottle the smell is noticed i've given examples of a perfume mine so this is an example of diffusion okay so there is an, an example here matter is made up of tiny particles as it can be evidenced by diffusion eh? so matter is made up of tiny particles this is evidenced by kinetic theory of matter also the brownian motion and diffusion itself what is meant by diffusion okay i've given the definition in what state does diffusion occur liquid and gas okay and then there's other questions here that you can answer when the stopper is taken out of the bottle the smell of perfume can be noticed. Explain from your knowledge of particles why this happens. Also, this one should answer it. I, for those doing tuition with me, should answer these questions that are here. Okay, so this is what I wanted us to learn uh, for, for now. And then we'll continue uh, other topic. Uh, we'll look at these things. And um, these are separation techniques now that are coming up.